I'm Mark Braley and I'm the proprietor of KMET here at Old Kent Road. And about four years ago, we had a go at getting a bit of a network of businesses together, called it Vital OKR, uh, yeah, business association, I suppose it is, although it's really a little bit looser than that. It's a network uh, where we can all communicate with each other and do a bit of a push when uh, necessary. Yeah, it feels like the housing targets, I'm, I'm sure they're there. Well, I'm sure there is an argument that they're there for all the right reasons. <laughs> it's also an argument that there's some other reasons going on. But just take the the right reasons. Uh, for sure, there's a big need. Uh, but even if all those targeted housing numbers were delivering to that need spot on, which I don't think they are, but even if they were alongside addressing one challenge, you're creating other challenges, other problems. Because the scenario just doesn't work for everything that's needed in the area. You can't have those colossal housing numbers, even in a steroided up uh, configuration with you know, towers and very high density you can't have that and enough of the right kind of accommodation even to just reaccommodate the economy that's there let alone allow for significant diversification and expansion that seems possible it's like becoming a housing trumps all other needs and that's to me seems like that's the part of the problem i'm most aware of and horrified by that we gets presented as a scenario that can do all things for all people and yet it self-evidently isn't it just can't fit it can't work the scenario is wrong and the, and the most obvious part of that is the numbers are too high. You can't achieve those. If you try and come up with a, you try and imagine a scenario that could genuinely meet a wider range of needs, the key thing that has to happen is a much lower housing target. Well, it seems at the moment that Southwark are seeing their land assets, both existing and rapidly being acquired as all at the service of this one objective, which is delivering more housing full stop. A single objective of type, the type of accommodation, what it's for, what configuration it has, but also it seems very unambitious on and who's going to own it and what's going to happen into the future? How do you make a provision accommodation that you have judged is important to have? They don't seem to be thinking that through and moving anywhere exciting. I would be expecting them to oh, could be setting up special kinds of trusts and ownership vehicles and this is how we can work out genuinely mixed and co-location of very different uses within developments or alongside how do we do something more ambitious on the work, whole workspace uh, uh, challenge, which, by the way, is not just about industrial. It's, you know, it's also about forms of office and studio accommodation. It's also about retail and other um, uh, frontage high street uh, uses. All of these things have a space problem and the council could be actively engaging in that they could be a participant in the and, and an enabler in the development uh, that meets the needs they could be doing something even more ambitious with the housing as well so it's not just housing units it's not just standard flats of, of different bedroom numbers but you know what about the council doing something innovative with the house with the 
housing type? What what about if people do work from home more? What, and what if it's not just sitting at a sitting at the kitchen table with a computer, but it grows a little bit? What if someone wants another couple of employees? What happens if making jam in the kitchen grows into a little business and they want to package it? And they're not being nimble and creative and imaginative. They're just seeing it as we can help get housing developed. Uh, and that's... It's not only seems sad, but it seems rather wrong. It's all driving the same way. The land assets, the acquisition, how they're using that to enable development, how they're, how they're swinging around the planning system and aligning it with this single objective. The world will be happy if there's more housing units. And it's just like, well, it's not as simple as that, is it? Isn't a local authority supposed to be the body that has this overview of all sorts of things, but particularly around shaping the place, evolving the place to meet needs? Uh, and I just don't think they're doing that. You can't even reprovide the retail on the site. Well, there's your first problem. <laughs> Nobody's reproviding the retail. You know, it's. <laughs> It's a, it's a significant chain of stores and there's one here and a lot of people use it and then they, they need a they need a reasonable rectangular footprint of store and they ain't going to get it in that in the development that Southwark are proposing uh, what about Curry's PC World so even just what's on the site now it's got to go somewhere else and there's no plan for where that somewhere else is you know when you, you're talking with the uh, consultation consultants you mention like curry's pc world and they start saying oh I, you know we found that people pe people we know are, are doing all that shopping online and we know that there's a big shift in retail towards online but you, you can't turn that into a fantasy that the need for decent footprint retail is going to magically evaporate and and it doesn't seem very appropriate to uh think that the retail need can all turn into little shoppies because little shoppies are kind of tend to uh, be more comfortable serving the needs of more prosperous people. You can make a little shoppy pay if people are paying a high price. If you're hoping that people uh, are going to be entrepreneurial and then other people will work alongside and with and be employed by, then first requirement is a sufficient welcome for that and that's the accommodation challenge if there's not enough welcome if there's not enough space that people can easily take on then you've got a problem you're going to suffocate enterprise and it's particularly sad in a place like london and the the nature of the diversity in london is is very dynamic you can easily think of other places in this country and elsewhere where there isn't that dynamic. You know, places that are, might have a similar look, first sight, some similar challenges, similar levels of um, poverty or you know, lower income. Even people from uh, poor backgrounds of less, uh, less educational opportunity or achievement and might have might be burdened by a lot of problems there still constantly seems to be this momentum and people popping up and making businesses making stuff for them happen for themselves and that just so much of a positive asset for that then to hit the obstacle of not being the right space Oh, sorry, there aren't any railway arches anymore. They've all turned into cafes and stuff and um, uh, fancy offices. You know, sorry, <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't rent a space for cheap. Or sorry, you can't grow your little business uh, buying and selling things because there isn't a shed anymore. Or you can't start a shop because the rents have all rocketed and there aren't enough of them. And it's a, it's a, it's a big, big, it's a big, big problem. And, and if people can't see all that stuff as well, you know, if kids don't see industrial place where stuff's happening and they never, if they don't see it, it's like the, the guys around the corner, Weber Industries, who, you know, because they ha happen to be in, in a ground floor of a 
multi-story industrial building, pram factory. So for that reason, they got windows on the street. It's not like they thought we must have windows to the street because it'll be great for everyone to see us. It's like a practical thing. But it just so happens that they've got windows on the street and they kind of like it. And they say that all the time they get youngsters from the area coming and peering in the window and saying, you know, hey, mister, can I, can we come and see? And, you know, what are you doing in here? And we don't get that because we're tucked around the corner. But if you just think, well, that's so positive that you get youngsters seeing it and being interested. And some of them were a bit more gutsy, sort of, you know, say, can we have a look? What are you doing? And, you know, it, it might be a future for them, that kind of thing. If that's not there, then that doesn't happen.